Hi everyone, welcome to chapter 11 of The Boy at the Back of the Class. Chapter 11 is called The Game of Scrabble. After hearing Ahmet's story and seeing his pictures, I was bursting with lots of new questions. So were Tom and Josie and Michael, but we knew we couldn't ask Ahmet anything. We should write them down, suggested Josie. Then, maybe after the holidays, Ahmet will have put some more pieces back together, and Mrs Khan will think it's okay for us to ask him. We all agreed, so when I got home that night, I took out my old list of questions, and after crossing out the ones I had the answers to, wrote the new questions out in my very best handwriting, just to make sure we wouldn't forget any of them. This is what the list looked like. So, our five new questions are What is your sister's name and where is she now? Why wasn't your mum in the last picture? What happened to the cat? How long did it take to walk to France? Who are the bullies who dropped bombs on your house? After I had finished writing them out, I put the list in the front pocket of my rucksack. I would have to wait until the holiday was over to find out if Armet was ready to answer any of them. I know everyone in school likes the holidays, but I don't. Not really. Mum still has to work and she can't afford to send me to a holiday camp or for extra activities, so I have to spend most of my time with Mrs Abby. Usually Michael and Josie's parents come and take me to their house for a day, but Michael's parents were taking him on a holiday to France and Josie was going camping and Tom and his brothers were visiting family near the seaside, so there was no one to play with this holiday. The week felt extra long and extra boring, because London had what Mum calls a grey day week. That's when all the days are so cold and grey and wet and blustery that you don't want to get out of your pyjamas or your bed, and the whole week feels like one long grey day that you can't wait to be over. But on the Sunday morning before school opened again, just as Mum was reading her newspapers and I was trying to decide what we should do for our Sunday adventure, the phone rang. Mum picked it up and when she put it back down again, she was biting her lip and frowning. That meant she had forgotten something important and was feeling angry at herself. Darling, I'm so sorry, I completely forgot. But that was your Uncle Lenny on the phone reminding me that he's coming to lunch today. I jumped up in excitement. With your Aunt Christina and baby Jacob, she added. I sat back down and made a face. Can't Uncle Lenny just come on his own? I asked. Mum shook her head. No, he can't. Your Aunt and Jacob haven't been here in a while, so it's nice that they want to come. And then, noticing that I was still making a face, she added. And guess what? Uncle Lenny is bringing lunch. Roast chicken, your favourite. And... He said he wants a Scrabble match so you're to set up the board immediately. I jumped up and ran to my bedroom to get the Scrabble board from underneath my bed. I love Scrabble more than any, more than all the other board games because it's the only game that I don't ever get bored playing. Dad always used to let me win by placing his letters in silly places so that he would get the lowest points. But Mum and Uncle Lenny never play low scoring words on purpose because Mum says that's helping me that helping me to win is cheating. She does let me use the dictionary though, because otherwise it wouldn't be fair. After all, she and Uncle Lenny are older and cleverer and know lots more words than a nine and a three quarters year old could ever know. And just like that, I didn't mind Aunt Christina and Jacob coming at all, because there was nothing I loved better than eating my Uncle Lenny's roast chicken, except playing Scrabble with him. Just like Josie, Uncle Lenny is in all my memories too. When Dad died, I remember him being at the hospital with us and hugging Mum and me a lot. That was when he started calling me his brave little tiger. I don't know why, because I didn't feel even the tiniest bit brave. But I didn't mind, because after the funeral, he was the only person who stayed behind and helped Mum sort everything out. None of my other uncles and aunts who visited us that day ever came back to see Mum and me again. Mum's friends try and visit us when they can, and Josie's mum is always asking us if we need any help, but they're busy with work just like mum is. 
Sometimes I think most of the people who came to the funeral were all really witches and wizards who had appeared out of thin air just so they could eat a buffet and shake their heads a lot before disappearing again. It was good they disappeared, because most of them smelled like old mothballs and liked to pinch my cheeks until they hurt. That's another reason I love Uncle Lenny. He's never, ever punch, pinched my cheeks or smelled like mothballs. He smells like warm bread most of the time and freshly baked cookies some of the time. He's a taxi driver and only works at night. He loves his job and tells us the funniest stories about all the different kinds of people who have jumped into the back of his car. Like the time a famous actress got in and ordered him to drive around for a whole hour just so she could get some sleep. Or the time a large Italian family spent the whole ride silently fighting over a single portion of fish and chips. Whenever my Uncle Lenny visits us, he always brings a large bag of food shopping and a chocolate bar just for me. He doesn't usually come with my Aunt Christina because she doesn't like us. I don't know why, but it's okay because I don't like her either. She's very beautiful and he's always perfectly dressed with perfect hair and with perfect makeup on her face. But she wrinkles up her nose whenever she sees something she doesn't like, which is nearly all the time. So she always looks as if she smelled a bag of bad eggs. She has a fake smile too. It's one of those smiles that shows lots of teeth, but which never travels to any other part of her face. I don't trust people who can't smile with their whole face. It means they're trying to hide something from you. Fake smiles always make you want to get as far away from the fake smiler as possible. Their son Jacob is okay, but he's only two and likes to break things, so I try to hide all my best toys from him whenever he comes over. After I finished setting up the scrub board, I helped Mum tidy up the house and was making my bed sheets extra straight when the doorbell rang. All right, all right, all right, how's my favourite nearly ten-year-old doing? shouted Uncle Lenny when I opened the door. He always says that, even though I know I'm the only nearly ten-year-old he knows, which means he can't have any other favourites. Okay, I shrugged. Only okay, he asked, bending down and looking me in the eyes. Hmm, might need to send you to the smile doctor. I smiled wider. That's better. He ruffled my hair and gave me a kiss on the cheek then heaved two large grocery bags into the kitchen. Afternoon, said my Aunt Christina. Her lips were pinched together and she was wearing so much perfume that it made my nose tickle. Jacob's asleep, so you'll have to play with him later, she said matter-of-factly as she carried Jacob in through the door and stuck out her pointy face at me. I stood on my tiptoes and gave her a kiss. She pulled away quickly. Right, what have you been up to then? asked Uncle Lenny as he came and steered me to the kitchen table. I think he must be so used to driving his taxi that he liked to drive people around too. Nothing, I shrugged. Do you want to play Scrabble with me now, Uncle Lenny? We'll have a game after lunch, my little tiger, he smiled. I'm not on till five today. Darling, why don't you tell Uncle Lenny all about your new friend? asked Mum as she set the table. Oh yeah, the pomegranate boy, said Uncle Lenny. Your mum told me, what's happening there then? Lots, I said. I began to tell him all about the big fight and the mysterious plant pot murder and the great baked beans bag trap and Armet story. And as we ate our lunch, I told them all about the bombs and the fires and the orange boats and the tents and Armet's cat and the railway track, and the wall with the barbed wire on it. Uncle Lenny shook his head and muttered, Poor Tyke, every few minutes. And Mum nodded along, looking sad sometimes. But Aunt Christina looked bored. Then, just as I was about to tell them about my new list of questions, Aunt Christina said, Doesn't surprise me you would want to be friends with a refugee kid at all, sweetheart. You'd have lots of things in common with him, what with your gran having been a refugee too. Uncle Lenny and Mum looked up sharply. I can't even bear to think about it. Imagine being a war refugee back in the day, before they all got loads of benefits and houses nicer than our ones. Uncle Lenny looked up angrily 
and was about to say something when, just then, Jacob began to cry. Aunt Christina jumped up and with a sniff said, Oh dear, seems he's christened the nappy again, before rushing out of the room. Mum, is that true? I asked, looking at Mum so hard that it felt like my eyes were about to pop out of my head. Was Gran a refugee too? All yours, muttered Uncle Lenny as he got up and walked over to one of the shopping bags. I'll get dessert, shall I? Mum looked at me for a moment and then she said, Yes, sweetheart, it is. Your grandma Jo. We went to see her with Daddy when you were little. Do you remember her? I nodded. Not because I really remembered anything, but because I had looked at all the photographs hundreds of times. I was five, and it was the last time my mum and dad and me went on holiday in a re real life plane. We went to a town called Salzburg, which is in a country called Austria, because that's where dad lived before he moved to England. He used to talk about the mountains and the rivers and the way the birds always seemed to follow him around. He looked so happy in all the photographs. So did Mum. I seemed to be crying in most of my photos, so I'm not sure if I was happy or not. I don't really remember anything about the trip, except for the large green wooden caravan my Grandma Jo had had in her back garden. Dad used to sleep in it in the summer holidays when he was a boy. My granddad had built it before the before he died, which is why Dad wanted to become a carpenter. There's a photo of me and Dad sitting on its steps, and it's the only photo of me where I'm not crying. Even then, I must have liked the idea of sleeping in a bright green caravan. I couldn't really remember anything about my Grandma Jo, but we had lots and lots of photos of her and Dad, and I always look at them whenever I miss Dad too much. She had short grey hair and wore glasses that were tied to a long golden chain, and she always wore flowery tops and white trousers. I wished I could have remembered her more, but sometimes, no matter how hard you try, or how badly you might want to, your brain can't reach that far back. Why was she a refugee? I asked. Did she run away from bombs like Armet? Mum stayed quiet as Uncle Lenny placed four large chocolate eclairs on the table in front of us. I love chocolate eclairs because it's like having three desserts in one. But as much as I wanted to eat my eclair, I wanted to hear the answers to my questions more. Uncle Lenny sat back down and cleared his throat. <clears throat> don't, don't think they've done World War II in school yet, have they? He asked my mum quietly. Mum shook her head. World War II? I asked. You mean there was another one? Uncle Lenny nodded. Yep. Just like the one you learnt about last year, but twice as bad, he whispered as though it was a secret. Mum put my eclair on a plate and pushed it towards me. All you need to know, darling, is that Grandma Jo was a wonderful person and that she helped lots of refugees, just like your friend Ahmed, run away from a war too, she said. Were they running away from Syria as well? I asked, wondering just how long a war lasted. No, darling, said Mum, putting her own eclair on a plate. They ran away from a different war, one that started in Germany, and they were running away from people who called themselves Nazis. Oh, I said, wondering just how many wars I needed to learn about. Anyway, the important thing is she survived, and she got to see you, exclaimed Uncle Lenny as he gave my hair a stroke. Exactly, said Mum, tapping my hand. Now eat up and let's get a game of Scrabble going before Uncle Lenny has to leave. I nodded, and knowing that my mum didn't want me to ask any more questions, broke open my eclair. That afternoon, Uncle Lenny stayed and played two whole games of Scrabble with us, and Aunt Christina watched Jacob break one of Mum's vases, rip a book, and throw my Lego bricks across the room. Mum won the first game, and Uncle Lenny won the second one, and I got the lowest points I'd ever gotten in history. But I didn't mind. I don't think you can really focus on playing a game when you've just found out that your grandma was a refugee, who would help lots of other refugees run away from a war too, even if you're playing a game that's fun as Scrabble. Okay, that's the end of chapter 11. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll read chapter 12 tomorrow. Bye.